But hopefully by looking at the screen today, you can see that I've planned something that's not only relevant, but varied as well. So it gives you a good range of different topics to look at. Now, some of these topics you may be pretty comfortable and confident with, but the more practice you do, the more confident and comfortable you are with them. So even if you're thinking, Sam, I'm pretty happy with fractions or, you know what, I'm pretty happy with nth term, I still, you know, stick around, stay with me and practice and reinforce those skills that you've got. OK, so first things first, we are going to look at fractions and you'll notice that there's a plus a subtract, a times and divide, because we know in paper one, there's going to be. OK, let me share my screen again. We know in paper one, there's going to be um, an arithmetic fractions question, which either means add, subtract, divide or times. Now, we don't know which one in particular, but we do know there will be a case where they ask you to do some some um, some arithmetic with the fractions. Wait, let me share my screen again. There we go. OK, so we need to be able to add, subtract, times and divide. Now I'm going to start off with. If I remember correctly, addition. OK, now when it comes to adding fractions, if the bottom numbers are the same, it's actually quite nice. It's quite easy. OK, because what you need to do is just add across the top and keep the bottom numbers the same. OK, so let's take this one, for example, two fifths plus one fifth. As you can see, the bottom of the fractions are the same, so that number can stay the same. And then two add one is three. So you've got three fifths. Now that's quite nice. So always remember if you've got the bottom numbers the same, it's quite a nice question. However, sometimes you'll notice, and more likely and often than not, you'll notice that the bottom numbers are different when you have to add the fractions. So if the bottom numbers are different, what you need to do is make them the same. OK, and the quickest, most effective way to make them the same is by multiplying them together. That's what I do for each and every fraction. Um, I multiply them together and it allows me just to give me that common denominator, the same bottom number. So seven times three gives me 21, okay? 21, 21. And we are adding, so it's worth putting a little add symbol in the middle there to remind us. Now, this is the crucial bit, and this is the bit you need to pay attention to because this kind of underpins everything that we've just done. So I have to ask myself, how did I get from seven up to 21? Well, I times it by this three here, so I did it by times by three. Now, whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do to the top, okay? So I have to do four times three as well. Four times three gives me 12, so the top number is going to be 12. Now, let's have a look at this second number. So how did I get from three up to 21? I times it by seven. Where you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So two times seven is 14. Once we've got that, we've got the bottom numbers the same. The rest of the question does end up being quite nice. So we keep the bottom number the same. We keep that as 21 and then we add the top two numbers. So 12 at 14 is 26. OK, now what we've got here is something known as an improper fraction. You'll notice it's top heavy. The top number is bigger than the bottom number. OK. For some reason nothing's happening on my screen. like that point is present for. Ah, Lucy, if you try and leave and come back, hopefully it might reset the, the meeting for you and it hopefully updates with the PowerPoint. But hopefully everyone else can still see what's happening on my screen. But you guys, you'll notice they've got an improper fraction now. What you may be asked, excellent lot, yeah, it needs to become a mixed number. Because you may be asked in a question, give your answer as a mixed number. Now, a mixed number, let's just do one for example here, is a whole number, an integer like so, with a fraction next to it. So a big number with a fraction beside it. That is a mixed number. And how do we turn an improper fraction into a mixed number? Well, I'm going to tell you, OK? How many 21s go into 26? How many 21s go into 26? One. Excellent. Now, what is the remainder? What is the difference between 21 and 26? There is a remainder of five. So five becomes my top number. And remember, it's a fraction and we keep the bottom number the same. So one and then five over 21. So let me write that down in my notes. Mixed number. Now, why is that important to be able to do that extra little bit? I think if you get up to this point, it is worth two marks. OK. If you get up to this point, we've seen in exams that it's worth three marks. 
So if you can do that one extra little bit, that gets you the extra mark. And you know, when you're dealing with like maths, every mark counts, okay? So it's worth to trying to get our best amount of marks on each and every question, okay? Well, that is how we add fractions, okay? So if the bottom numbers are the same, keep them the same. If they're different, we have to make them the same and we times those two base numbers together. Now, essentially what it's saying, four sevenths add two thirds will give me one whole with five twenty firsts left over. But yeah, there we go. Right, I'll leave, I'm gonna not delete any of you, hopefully keep all the PowerPoint the same so at the end I can save it and share it. But yeah, there we go guys, there's the first examples done. Now the good thing, when we subtract fractions, it's the same routine, it's the same process, okay? So if the bottom numbers are different, we need to make them the same. So straight away, I can see five and four, they're different numbers. So I'm gonna draw two new sets of fractions where the numbers are gonna be the same. So how do we make them the same? Five times four, that gives me 20. My two new fractions are both gonna be over 20. Then I ask myself, well, how do I get from the five up to 20? Well, I times it by four. Whatever I do to the bottom, I do to the top. Three times four, is 12. OK. Next little bit, let's change it to purple now. How did I get from four up to 20? I times it by five. Remember this five over here and I times the top by five as well. One times five is five. And what we're we doing in this question, we are subtracting. Really important to remember that we're taking you away. So once again, keep the bottom number the same. It's going to be over 20. 12 take away five is seven. 720s. Yeah, Lacey, that's absolutely fine. With with regards to all of this, this is going to be recorded so you can watch it back later. It's optional, so don't feel as though you're, you're not going to pick up an attendance mark or anything. But like I say, the more you can engage with maths over Easter, the more sharp and refreshed your skills will be when you come back. So um, as long as you're doing some revision over Easter, guys, that's really good. Right, let me do one more example. And then we're going to move on to multiplying and dividing, which are actually the nicest ones. OK. So once again, these bottom numbers are different. If they're different, we need to make them the same. OK, so I draw two new fraction lines. Eight times seven is 56. OK. So both of these new fractions are going to be out of 56. Now I ask myself, or let me put a little subtract symbol in there because I know I'm subtracting these. How do I get from eight up to 56? I times it by the seven and I do the same to the top. Seven times seven, 49. OK, change the colour to bubble. How did I get from seven up to 56? I times it by the eight to so do the same to the top. Two times eight is 16. And then the final piece of the jigsaw, the final hurrah, the home straight is to subtract. Keep the bottom number the same. 49 take away 16 is going to give me 33. OK, now personally for me. In November on paper one, you have to add fractions, so I don't think they'll ask you to add fractions again personally. So I think it might be subtract, subtraction, subtraction, multiplication or division. OK, personally, but we'll have to wait and see. But Regardless, make sure you're up to date with all four skills because you just never know. OK. Now, when it comes to multiplying fractions, mm -hmm. very nice. Not very simple, but very nice to do. OK, simply times the top numbers together, times the bottom numbers together. So five times one is mm -hmm. five. Six times four is twenty four. Little smiley face because that's all you need to do. Times across, yeah. Times the top numbers together, times the bottom numbers together. Excellent, guys. And guys, I know I'm not talking too much to the chat today, but I can see your responses and you're saying exactly the right things, which is really nice. Now, seven eighths times six. Seven eighths times six. Now, that's not, this isn't a fraction, is that's a whole number. So when we're multiplying by a whole number, what we need to do is turn that six into a fraction. Really close, Lucy, really close. It's not one over six. Very, very close. Let me fix this up a second. Let me get rid of that. In order to turn six into a fraction, we need to divide it by a number. And that number is one. Any number divided by one stays the same. OK, so let me write that. So we're going to go seven eighths times by six over one. 
If it was times by 100, for example, I put 100 over 1. Anything as a whole number, write it as a fraction over 1 and it stays the same. OK, 7 times 6 is 42. 8 times 1 is 8. And then I think, Lizzie, there, what you've done is you've simplified it. Excellent. So what it may ask you to do as well, it give your answer in its simplest form. So we have to think about simplifying. OK, so what number goes into both 8 and 42? Well, I know they're both dividable or divisible by 2, so I can divide them both by 2. The top number by 2 and the bottom. That gives me 21 over 4. And Little, like this is where you have to do this. I, I know I'm doing it with my hands, but you have to think in your brain, does any number go into both 21 and 4? If it doesn't, you know you've got your most simplified answer right there and you've picked up that extra mark, OK? So always read the question carefully. If it says simplify, do that extra step. If it says give your answer as a mixed number, do that as well, OK? Right, guys, last little bit. Now, there are three letters I have in my mind for this. I'm wondering if you guys know what those three letters might be. Yeah, you pretty much nailed it. Then. KFC. Now, I was going to be quite like not not like cheeky, but I was going to go to KFC last night and have like a KFC like drink next to me, but I, I forgot to do that. KFC, and I'm going to write that on the screen here. Keep, flip, and change. Keep, flip, change. KFC. Now, what do I mean by KFC? What do I mean by keep, flip, change? Well, we keep the first fraction the same. So that stays as five over six. We flip the second one. So we flip those two numbers. So it becomes four over one. And then we change the divide to eight times. Our characters, you've had a, like a Mackey's breakfast character. Five times four is 20. And then six times one is six. Now, what do we have here? We have an improper fraction. So what should we try and do? You're in Mackey's now, oh my days. Try and convert it into a mixed number. Excellent, guys, good. So I have to ask myself, how many times does six go into 20? How many times does six go into 20? Three, excellent. The remainder is two. Excellent. I can see some. But yeah. And then it'll be a little six there. Now, personally, for me, I want to go with that one extra mile. Can you see two six? We can even we can simplify that a little bit further, couldn't we? What could we simplify two six into? <laughs> I can't believe you're a Mackie. I'm quite jealous, actually. I could do it with Mackie's. Right. One third. Excellent. So I'm just going to change that to one third just to me. Extra simplified, extra low. There we go. Guys, good stuff. I'm impressed. You guys are pretty good, aren't you, in the chat? I like it. Right. So I don't lose my voice. I'm going to do one more example. I'm going to get you guys to get stuck in, OK? So here we go. Keep, flip, change. Keep, flip, change. So seven eighths stays the same. We change it to a times and we flip it so it becomes seven over two. Seven times seven is 49. Eight times two is 16. Here we go, guys. This is a challenge for you today. How many times does 16 go into 49? I'm going to convert it into a mixed number. How many times does 16 go into 49? I look so bright today. 16. Think about your 16 times. Quite hard. You might have to pen and paper and write them down as you go. 16, 32, 48. So it goes in three times. The difference between 48 and 49 is one. So it'll be three and then one over 16. There's my mixed number. OK, right. What I'm going to do, I've, because I'm, I'm a nice guy, I've set up a Desmos for today, but because of my technology issues at the start, the Desmos isn't ready yet. So I'm going to quickly load up Desmos. This is where hopefully technology doesn't let me down and I'll share with you the link. So what I want you guys to do is practice these skills in a mixed manner. Like obviously, I've gone through each one of those. Now, what I'd like you to do is try and apply. Let me just lo log in. Whoops. I want you to try and apply those skills now 
in a mixed and varied way. OK, just to put your skills to the test, really. I will go through the questions after so you can use me as a resource to see where you've had success or not. If you do have a scientific calculator, you can even use your calculator to check your answers. Obviously, the key word is check your answers and not do the do the sums. OK, because we know this is going to come up on paper one. So we want to make sure that our non calculator skills are. Creme de la creme. Right, I've got the link for Desmos now. I'm going to put it in the chat, OK? And if, you know, Karius and Abby, if you want to take a McDonald's order from us all, I it's just, what, I don't know. I was going to say I'll have a Big Mac, but I don't know if it's still breakfast. Um, but what I'll do, guys, questions, I'll leave, I'll leave the subtraction notes on the screen for you guys, OK? So you can have that to refer back to. But if you need any help, drop me a message privately or on, in the chat and I'll do my best to support you as best as I can through the power of the Internet. OK, so we're doing slide one. There are six questions. Always oh, just get stuck in, show me what you can do. OK, is there six? Yeah, there's six. OK, right. I'll have a breather. You guys crack on. When the majority of you have finished, let me know in the chat and then we'll uh, get stuck in. Sweet guys, guys, excellent stuff so far. Really impressed with your maturity and the fact that you were so patient as well. I do genuinely appreciate that. Right, yeah. catch you in a bit.
Hey, Ali, I've just seen your message about going to the next page. Don't worry. I've sounds harsh. This I've blocked it because the next page is on standard form, which is something we've not looked at yet. So we will go on to that. But for now, on the first page, doing those six fraction questions, I'm going to wait another uh, two minutes. I'll give another two minutes because that gives approximately about nine minutes on this activity. Um, and then I'm going to go through the questions. But while uh, Ellie and my Keris, etc. Thank you for letting me know that you finished. That's good. That's what I like to see. Now I'm going to go through these uh, in two minutes time and just make sure that we're all happy with them and make sure we've, we're identifying the mistakes. Now I'm a big ad like I don't mind if you've made mistakes or you've got the answer wrong because that's the part of the learning process. But what I'm hoping for is that when you've got it wrong, you'd be like, oh, OK, that's what I did wrong. You can try and add, like, uh, you know, what's the word? You can try and spot the error in your ways, because if you can spot the mistake, you're less likely to repeat it in the future. OK. For example, when I did my driving lessons, when I made mistakes, I had to think, right, what did I do wrong that time? OK, right. Next time I'll try not to do that. And then eventually through trial and error, you develop the skill. And now look at me, I'm like Lewis Hamilton on the road. I'm like, <laughs> maybe not that fast, but still. Um, one more minute then, guys, and we'll go through these questions. In the meantime, if you finish, check your answers. Make sure you've not made any slight errors with your multiplication or your addition or subtraction. You know, this is quite good. It mimics finishing the end of a paper and you can just check your work. Right, yep, have I done that as best as I can? Right, so Ellie, yeah, so Ellie, yeah, it's quite difficult sometimes with regards to Desmos and putting the answers in in the correct format. But as long as you know what you what your answer was, if that makes sense, and know how you would write it on pen and paper, that's fine. Uh, Desmos obviously is an interesting uh, tool that we use, but it's really good for me to see overall understanding, if that makes sense. Um, and if you wrote it down on paper anyway, that's excellent. And like you've got a killer bruise, interesting. I played. Oh my days, Karen. I played football yesterday at quarter to nine and I ran into a man, I'm not joking, who was about six foot six. It was like running into a brick wall. I bounced straight off of him and now I, I hurt. I'm in pain because it felt like I got hit by a car. Anyway, 
let's look at these answers because it is just gone quarter two, so that's that two minutes past. Right, guys, question 1A. OK, we're dealing with division of fractions. So straight away, I've got something in my brain. I'm like, right, dividing fractions, KFC. OK, now that's how we have to think. We need to have certain things that we think, oh, yeah, I need to do this for this question. So KFC. So five sixths stays the same. We'll flip the second fraction to four over one and then we times them together. So that gives me five times four, which is 20. And then six times one is one. Now, you guys know what I'm going to say here. Let's go that one step further and work that out as a mixed. Why have I put over one? Why have I done that? There we go. Should be over six, shouldn't it? Six times one is six. OK, panic over. Don't worry, I do know what I'm doing. OK, now what I'm yeah, like now I can look at it and be like, right, mixed number. But lots of you got 20 over six, which is brilliant. OK, how many sixes go into 20? Three of them with the remainder of two. And then you can put the bottom number as six. And if you wanted to simplify that fraction, you could put three and then one over three. OK, so there's different options, different answers there, but I'm happy. If you've got 20 over six, I'm happy. If you've got three over two, three and then two six or three and a third, still happy. OK. Oh, nice. This one seven times two. Notice that guy straight away. I see the times. I'm like, oh, nice. That's what I want you guys to be thinking. You see a multiplication buzzing. Happy days. Seven times two is 14 times and across the top. Eight times seven is 56. Now they are both even numbers so I can simplify that I can get them lower so I can divide them both by two okay that gives me la 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 seven over 28 now this is a good question for you guys what number goes into seven and 28 what number goes into both seven and 28 I can see some of you have nailed this in the answers, which is really good. Seven and 28. Hopefully you guys are telling me. It can be both. Yeah, excellent. Seven goes into both of those, so we can divide them both by seven. Seven divided by seven is one. Twenty eight divided by seven is four. Hey, Mohammed, don't worry if you've left it as a as a. Um, as a whole, that's absolutely fine because never in my question does it say give your answer as a mixed number. So if you've not thought to do that, don't worry. But in an exam, if it says to do it, please make sure you do it because that's an extra mark in the bag for that. OK. OK, C and D. Ooh, OK, OK, OK. Addition and a subtract or subtraction and an addition one. The bottom numbers are different, so I need to make them the same. So seven times six is 42. Boom, boom, boom. Um, what did I do to the seven to get it up to 42? Well, I times it by six. So I do the same to the top. Three times six is 18. What did I do to the six to get it up to 42? I times it by seven times by seven. We're taking away. So it's going to be 11 over 42. I don't think. Nope, it cannot be simplified. That cannot get any lower. So that's a. A question which we can leave as it is. Brilliant. And then we've got an addition here now. OK, so. The bottom numbers are different. Step one, make them the same. How do we do that? We times the bottom numbers together. So five times seven is thirty five. Like so. OK, how did I get from five up to thirty five? I times it by seven. Do the same to the top. Two times seven is fourteen. OK, now I've got seven up to thirty five. I times it by five. So I do the same to the top. One times five is five. And remember, really crucial here. We're adding them. So we need to add these fractions. So keep the bottom number the same. So that stays as thirty five. Fourteen add five is nineteen. Swish. OK, last two. And then we're going to move on to something called standard form, which I quite like. I quite like standard form. OK, looking at these, we're adding the fractions are different on the bottom. What do we do? Make them the same. So two new lines go in. Five times three is 15. 
Whoa, okay, let me just get rid of that stupid line. Let me do that again. There we go, 15. So how did I get from five up to 15 times it by three? Whatever I do to the top, uh, the bottom, I do to the top. So that's going to be three times three, which is nine. Then I can move on to the second fraction. How did I get from three up to 15? I times it by five. So I do the same to the top. Two times five is 10. And remember, we're adding. So we put a little add symbol in there to remind us what to do. Keep the bottom fraction the same. So that's going to stay as 15. Nine add 10 is 19. What am I going to say? What am I going to say? Here, guys, we've got a top heavy fraction. I'm going to say let's convert it to a mixed number, aren't I? How many 15s go into 19? How many 15s go into 19? One. What's the remainder? With four left over, excellent. We keep the bottom number the same. So one and then four fifteen. That's my mixed number right there. Happy days. Good stuff, guys. Now I do appreciate everyone's responses in the chat. Good. It makes me feel like I'm not talking to myself, which is a good thing. Now you'll notice that I've, this is my little teaser at the end, okay? Because we've got a division, but we're dividing by five, okay? So what we're gonna do? Make that a whole, make that a fraction. So five over, what I should have done is change this number actually, because some of you may have thought of a quick way to do this, but I'm gonna do my, my steady way. So I wanna change it to five over one, because any number over one stays the same, okay? So then I'm gonna keep, flip, change. Are you ready? So from the top, keep the first fraction the same. So five over nine change it to a times and flip it so it becomes one over five five times one is five nine times five is 45. now let's say it says simplify what number goes into both five and 45. five does yeah excellent so we're going to divide the top by five and we'll divide the bottom by five, okay? Five divided by five is one, and then 45 divided by five is nine. Oh my God, I nearly had a brain fart then, nearly forgot. There we go. Now, some of you don't have any chocolate with me, but let's say I had chocolate, I split it up into five pieces, or not, I'm not gonna go into that then. Blah. You guys have got it, I'm not gonna go into crazy talk, okay? So guys, that is a quick recap there of the four operations, okay? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. Now, I remember, and I think I've told my students this a few times this year, I remember sitting there on the floor learning how to do that. And I learned them not really knowing if they were gonna come up. However, we know for a fact, a question like that will appear in the papers. So please put the time and effort into having confidence with those sort of questions, okay? Paper one, it's gonna call upon, so non-calculator. Now we're gonna look at standard form. Converting mixed, uh, converting standard form into ordinary numbers, and then converting ordinary numbers into standard form, okay? I'm gonna try and teach it as best as I can, but my top, top advice is you guys listening carefully. OK, so you've got two examples. Here. I would like you to copy these down because I think having good notes is always helpful. But let's say we've got example number one. And then we have example number two. And you'll see the differences between them. OK. Right. 6.1 times 10 to the power of five as an ordinary number. So at the moment, let me highlight this because some students kind of forget, like, what is standard form? This is something called standard form. OK. So standard form is always a number between one and ten or one and nine point nine 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 nine, whatever it may be, times by ten to the power of something. So there's always a little number there. So that's standard form. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> How? Down, 
There we go. Let's make sure everyone's muted. OK, there we go. Right. So hopefully you guys can hear me. So what I've highlighted there in yellow is standard form. So what we're going to do now is convert that into an ordinary number. And by an ordinary number, I mean a number that we usually see written in newspapers, in maths lessons, that sort of thing. OK, so let me just change it to my pen and red. Right. So 6.1 times 10 to the power of five. So what I want you to do, write down the number 6.1. Now, that's the first bit. The five represents how many jumps the decimal point needs to move. OK, and then which direction? So five is a positive number, so the number is going to get bigger. OK, so the decimal point is going to jump five places to the right. One, two, three, four, five. There's my new decimal point. Now, underneath each hump, we're going to put zeros. OK, like so. So you should have the number six, one, followed by four zeros. Now I'm just going to quickly do that zero again. There we go. But the decimal point is no longer there. It's now at the end of the number. So what we can do is write that down in a bit of a nicer format. So we can put six, one, zero, 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 zero. Just to put like a nice neat bow on it. But yeah, Mo and Lottie, excellent there. You've nailed that. Good. Now we're going to look now at this number here. That's the first example. That's 610,000. OK, 8.12 times 10 to the power of minus four. So what I want to do is write down 8.12. Now, what does this mean? The minus four means the number is going to get smaller. So instead of the move, uh, the decimal point moving to the right, it's going to move to the left. OK, and it's not moving to the left five times this time. It's going to be four times. You ready? One, two, three, four. There's my new decimal point place. And then zero, zero, zero. And because of how I am, I always like to put a zero before the decimal point as well. OK, and then what we can do, we can write that number again in the correct format. So zero point zero, 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 eight, one, two. Karen, Lottie, Lottie, very, very close. Very, very close. You've got to put a chuck another zero into yours. But yeah, Karen, excellent there. OK, so that is what I'm looking for when we convert a standard format number into an ordinary number. Write the number out and then move the decimal place the correct direction and the correct number of jumps. OK. Now. I might I might edit the slide slightly and just do one more example. Or I might let actually no, no. I'll let you guys practice. I think practice is the best format of um, developing the skill. Now, what you may have to do is give an order an ordinary an ordinary number as standard form. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. So let's have a look here. So we've got eighty one thousand three hundred and twenty. That's that number written out. Bigger, more clearer for me to work with. Now the decimal point always goes after the first actual number. So there it goes. OK, so what am I left with? Eight point one three two. Eight point one three two. Remember, standard form, we always times it by 10. OK, now what I need is the little number, the indice. OK, how do I do that? I have to count how many jumps the decimal point makes to get from here to here. OK, you ready? One, two, three, four. So it's going to be 10 to the power of four. So I'm going to start from the top on that one. You ready? Now, if I'm a good teacher, my explanation will be very similar, if not better. Are you ready? So step one with a question like this. Write the number out, but bigger and more easier to work with. So 81,320. OK, standard form. We always put the decimal after the first number. So it becomes there. 8.132. So let me write that out. 8.132. Now I'm not bothering with the zero because the zero comes at the end. But if the zero was in between the three and the two, I would include it. OK, but for now I can leave it at 8.132 times by 10. And then the final bit is making the jumps. One, two, three, four, four jumps. Ten to the power of four. OK. Now we're dealing with a little tiny number. No point no no seven eight 
six. I've tried to make the number bigger, easier to work with. Now the decimal point, once again, it goes after the first proper number. Guys, just in the chat, what is the first proper number in that example there? What is the first proper number? Yes, excellent, the seven. So the decimal point goes after the seven. OK, so what's the number I've got? 7.86. 7.86. Times it by 10. And then how many jumps? One, two, three jumps to get from where it started to here. Now, this is crucial. It's a small number, so it's 10 to the power of minus three. Minus three, because it's a small, tiny number. Big number? 81,000, it's a positive indice. And it's a small number dealing with really tiny decimals. We're going to deal with a negative indice. OK. That's what I'm looking for, guys. So I'm going to give you a range of questions now that involve you writing standard form as an ordering number and then an ordering number into standard form. OK, bit of variety there just to keep you guys going. And I'll leave some of my stuff on the board. I like your confidence, Mohammed. I like that. Right, I'm going to put a link back into Desmos for you guys in the chat in case you're new or if you've just joined. After this, we'll have a little five minute break and then we'll finish on the end just to give us a bit of a breather. OK, so guys, get stuck in. When most of you have done, do what you did before and just let me know in the chat. OK, that really does help me, you know, have an idea. Why is there a dog on the camera? Gives me an idea for the pacing, OK? Abby, OK, stop playing with the you can play with the dog, but do it after you've done these questions, OK? Guys, you're absolutely right. I've just sorted it for you. I'm super apologetic there. I was so relaxed. I completely forgot to bump you onto the next slide. So yeah, the next slide, slide two, has all of your standard form questions. Ace. So yeah, guys, you should be able to move across now. Sorry about that, uh, Ellie, Lucy and Abby and that. Hey Ali, that's absolutely fine. No, I appreciate you being honest with me. OK, what we'll do, we'll do the first couple together. Now, yeah, we'll do the first two together. Come on, let's do it. Right. So standard form is quite a difficult subject. So don't worry if you're confused. It's absolutely fine. It's something that if you've not done it before, it's going to be even more difficult. But let's take our time with it and I'll talk you through what we're trying to do. So basically, you can see we've got a standard form notation there. So something a number has been 
put into a standard format there, okay? I'm going to highlight it. So 3.25 times 10 to the power of 4, okay? So what we need to do is convert that into an ordinary number. And we first step, really, is to write 3.25 out, because that's the, they're the digits we've been given. So 3.25, okay? Once we've got that, what we need to do is move the decimal point. Now, it tells us here we need to move it four places. And because it's a positive four, it's not like minus four or anything like that, we can move the decimal point this way to the right. So one, two, three, four. And the decimal point is now there. Now, this is the crucial bit. Where there's like gaps, like underneath the jumps, we put zeros, like so. And then what we're trying to do is write that number now, like say, as an ordinary number. So we know all the digits we have and all the zeros. So three, two, five, zero, zero. OK, so 32,500 is what I'm looking for there. Now, let's do this in second one as well whilst we're here. So, oops, I changed the color of the pen. Let's change it back. Six. 0 0.04 times 10 to the power of minus 3. So the decimal point needs to jump three places, but to the left this time because it's a minus 3. So it's a small, so that means we're going to go this way. OK, so I'm going to change my pen to black. So 1, 2, 3. So that's the decimal point now. I remember where there's a gap, where there's humps, put a 0. And I always put a zero before a decimal point, just for comfort. So once again, I know I've got all the zeros that I need and all the digits that I need. So it's going to be 0, 0.00 and then 6,0,4. Now, I'll explain roughly why we use standard form. Standard form is to write very, very big numbers and very, very small numbers in an easier format. OK, for example, Na NASA scientists or biologists. If they're dealing with something that's super small, they'll use standard form. NASA, if they're talking about distance from the Earth to the sun, they'll probably use standard format in their notations and their calculations. Now, we know we, we may not use it every day, but it might well, we know it's coming up in the summer. OK. But what I'll do, I can set some assignments based off of today on century. And then if you're thinking, you know what, I need a little bit more time on standard form. There'll be an assignment there waiting for you, okay? But try and give them a go. Treat this as your like play mode. Sounds a bit weird that. Try and see this as your like, you can relax, you can do what you can, and then we'll go through it later. We'll go and practice it in later format, okay? Right, I'm gonna give you guys, you know, see some of you are working through them pretty well, but I'm gonna give you longer. I know this isn't an easy topic, and then we'll go through them together and then have a wee break, okay? Lottie, excellent. What I want you to do, just check your answers, make sure you're happy with them. And if it involves just quickly doing it once more and you get the same answer, it's worth doing it, okay? Yeah, of course, Ali. So, are you ready? So, first things first, when you're changing an ordinary number into standard form, write out the number again, do it slightly bigger. So, give yourself space 2400 zero, zero, and then three more zeros. So, it gives you more space. The more space in math, the better, okay? Now, the decimal point always goes after the first number. So it goes boom there, 2.4, 2.4. So I'm going to write that out over here, 2.4. Now we're dealing with a big number, 2,400,000. It's a big number. So I'm going to times it by 10. And then the little indice, the little number I'm going to have, it's going to be positive. So you're ready. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six jumps it would make. So it's 2.4 times 10 to the power of six. That's it. That's it. I don't have to do anything else, anything extra. I've converted it into standard form right there. And I'll do this one as well because I'm in the flow now. I'm enjoying doing these. I find them quite therapeutic. And Lottie, if you finish, you can check your answers against mine if you wish. 0 0.001. Or seven. So the decimal point goes after the first number that so becomes one point 
four, seven times by 10. How many jumps does it make? One, two, three jumps. So it's going to be minus three. There we go. Like I say, find the therapeutic. If you do enough of these, enough practice, you just flow through them like, like a river. OK, how many more questions are there? There's ENF, is there any more? ENF, the last two. So give you guys a little bit longer. And then we'll go through them as a group. OK, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go through E and F and then just do a quick recap on them. OK, now I suppose the difficult thing for me is I've got a lot of students in here that I don't actually know. So I'm trying to not like that's a bad thing. I think it's really good, actually. And I'm enjoying the fact I'm teaching different students, but I don't know your strengths and weaknesses. But if there's anything today that you're like, I'm a little bit unsure of, message me. Like, I'm quite sad in the fact that it's Easter and I've got nothing planned other than well, I, I've got, I bought a house, I'm renovating the house, but yeah, I'm free. So if you've got any questions about anything we cover, I'm happy to send you YouTube videos, century assignments, anything, OK, um, to help support you understand them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly go through A, B, C, D again, but not in like thorough, thorough detail and then do E and F. OK, so just so you guys have got something, a point of reference for your answers. What did I do? I wrote the number out again, so 3.25. I moved the jumps in the right place, so I moved it to the right, and then added in the zeros. So that gave me 32,500, okay? For the next one, once again, 6.04, I need to move the decimal point three places to the left. So I've done that, and then I put in my zero, so 0 0.00604. Next one, this is the one whereby we write the number out, and then we put the decimal point in, and then you count the jumps that it made. So 2.4 times 10 to the power of six, which by the looks of Desmos, looking pretty consistent there, which is really encouraging. And then for the second one, we should have minus three, which is also very encouraging because a lot of you got that right as well. So yeah, one, two, three. So you're moving or you're counting the jumps from where the decimal point started to where it ended, okay? Now these are the last two, so listen carefully because I've not done these yet. But let's see how we're getting on here. So 5.043. Now, because I can see it's a minus five, I know I need to do jumps to the left. So already I'm thinking I'm going to write my number this way over this side a bit, just to give me a bit of space. Um, there we go. So five jumps here. Like kangaroo jumps this, ready? One, two, three, four, five. 
So the decimal point is now there. Now carefully, this is crucial, under each gap we put a zero, like so. So let's see. I'm gonna need, I need to give myself space. So zero point zero 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 five zero four three. So Ellie, you Ellie, did you get that right? I think you did. I think from you got four zeros. Yeah. Sorry guys, I didn't realise I was showing my four. I had so much then. There we go. Good. All right. Last one. Nice and big. One five four seven zero. The decimal point goes in after the first number. So boom. <clears throat> so it leaves me with one point five four seven times by 10. How many jumps did it take to get from the, because the decimal point started at the end of the number. So that's where it was originally. Okay. So how many jumps to get from there? It's four jumps, 10 to the power of four. That is standard form. Conversions between ordinary to standard form and standard form back to ordinary. Now, if you're like Mohammed and you've had success with each one of those questions, brilliant. If you have a success with most of the questions, really good as well. Practice, practice, practice. Now, I say to my students a lot of the time, like my maths isn't actually that good, but because I do it so frequently, it has become quite good. And that's the same with you guys. The more you do, the stronger your math skills become. Okay, I'm glad you asked that, Ellie. So I said the decimal point is always there. Now, any number in the world, let's start. Let's pick up a number. I need to find space. Let's go for. Let's go for a number up here. Let's go for three, one, four, zero, zero, two. Three hundred fourteen thousand and two. How do I know the decimal point is at the end of that number? Because the decimal point separates. Well, basically, it always comes at the end of a number, no matter what, unless you deal with a decimal where you have the decimal point already given to you. OK, so that there, that decimal has been given to me, so I know it's there. But if it's not given, it goes at the end. OK, don't know if that really makes sense. Let's think of another number. Practice makes perfect. Exactly. Exactly, Mohammed. Let's do one more. Let's go for six hundred and twelve thousand two hundred and twenty one. OK, no decimal point, so I know it would be at the end of the number. But if I had, for example, 61.2221, well, there's the decimal point that's been given to me there. So it depends on the question as and when where it is. OK, but if that if I butchered that explanation, I'll help you out, Ellie. OK, I'll, so I'll do another one or find a good video for you. OK, <clears throat> right. What we're going to do, we're going to have a two minute break. Two minute break before we do nth term. Now, what I'm thinking, Pythagoras' theorem, I'm going to save for another day when we're going to do it at the start when we're fresh. OK, so we're going to finish on nth term, but we're going to give ourselves a two minute break. OK, that gives me a chance to get a drink, gives you guys a chance to go to the toilet, but it gives you a chance just to relax a little bit because concentrating for, you know, an hour and 20 minutes or so is quite a difficult thing. So two minutes and we'll come back. So at 11, 20, Let's say 11.22, guys, OK? Let me just get my phone ready. Yeah, 11.22. Set your timers back in, back in two, OK?
Okay, guys, it is 11.22. Where's my drink? I did have a drink. Oh, it's, it's gone. <laughs> um, right, we are going to look at nth term. Like I said, we're going to save Pythagoras for another session. Maybe Thursday, Thursday afternoon makes sense, because I think Pythagoras is something that we know is coming up, and I want us to be fresh when we do it. I don't want it to be the end point where we might make mistakes and lose confidence, okay? So we are going to look at something called nth term. Now, I got my sheet here, which tells me what things are coming up on, but nth term, algebra, isn't it? Da, 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 da. It's going to be coming up on paper three, okay? So we know, I know it's a, it seems like a long way away, but paper three, we know questions regarding an nth term sequence is going to make an appearance, okay? So let's have a look. I quite like nth term as well. Once again, there's a there's a strategy that I've got and it works pretty much every time. No, it works every time, okay? So what is the nth term for the following sequences? 3, 9, 15, 21. So straight away, I need to think, what are those numbers going up in? Goes up by 6, so 6n minus 3. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see. Let's see what let's see if Lucy's right there. Let's have a look. So the numbers going up in sixes, okay, which I agree with. Six, gap, six. Yeah. So it's definitely six n. Definitely six n. Okay. You are you guys really you guys are making me feel like you already know all this. One side, what I do basically, once I've got that, once I know it's going up in sixes, I do my six times table above it, okay? Um, let's go for purple. Yeah, here we go. So 6, 12, uh, 18, and then 24. Then I ask myself, how do I get from 6 down to 3? I take away 3. How do I get from 12 down to 9? I take away 3. So it's going to be 6 and take away 3, which, to be honest, from those of you who contributed in the chat, spot on. That is the formula. That is the sequence. OK, 6 and subtracted three okay next one let's just quickly do that because i think you guys are already gonna have a gist of it what's it going up in guys you guys have had, you guys have got good teachers going up in fives okay so straight away five n going up in fives five n okay once i've done that get my purple pen out do my five times table five ten fifteen 20. I ask myself, how do I get from 5 up to 12? How do I get? Uh, come on, pen. Right, here we go. How do I get from 10 to 17? I add 7. I add 7. And if it's a rule for one, a rule for two, it's going to be a rule for all of them. 5n plus 7. That is how we work with nth term sequences. Now, Lots of confident suggestions and answers there. Now, these ones, slightly juicier, slightly spicier because they go downwards. You'll notice that the two, first two examples, the numbers went up. Now they're going down. OK, so we have to use our brain that little bit further. OK, so. Let's have a look. What are those numbers going down in? What are those numbers going down in? Four, actually, actually, yeah, four, two, zero, minus two, I should have said. Yeah, good. So it's going to be going down in two. Yeah, so it's going to be minus two n. OK. Just make that clear, minus twos. Then what I'm going to do in purple is my minus two times table. OK, so minus two, minus four, minus six, minus eight. Now, this is the bit where we have to, how do I get from here to here? How do I get from there to there, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Now, for me personally, what I do is I choose the nicest like link, the nicest pair of numbers, and I think it's easy for this bit here. How do I get from minus six to zero? What do I have to do? I have to, anyone got any suggestions? Yeah, I have to add six. Oops, let me change that back. I have to add six, OK? And then if it's a rule for one, we know it's a rule for all of them. So if that's add six, then that one, it will be add six. And this one is add six. And this one is add six, OK? So it is minus 2n add six. Now, 
what you may see in an exam is especially if it's like a multiple choice question in maths they don't tend to like they don't like to start with a negative so what you may see is it flipped where it says six this bit here minus two n okay so can you understand why so they're not a massive fan of negatives so they'll just flip it like literally this so you've got six minus two n does that make a little bit of sense because they're not a fan sometimes of having a minus at the start so you might just do a little switcheroo but i'll show you what i mean again with the next example okay i believe so the only time that i think this may cost you is if it's a multiple choice and you've not really recognized that okay right let's have a look at number two i can just see ellie has given me a suggestion which is nice okay let's have a look so what are they going down in they're going down in fours so it's going to be minus four okay so I'm going to put minus four and hello Ty as well. Hello, I've just seen your message. So change to purple. I'm just going to try and keep it consistent. Minus four, minus eight, minus 12, minus 16. Now, which one of those numbers seems the nicest for me to work with? I, I like dealing with like negatives and like these ones here. So minus 16 to minus two. How do I get from minus 16 to minus two? Well, I, I have to add 14 to add 14 to get to make up that gap. This pen is enough. There we go. So add 14 and you can check, right? Would that work for this one? Yeah, it would actually. Would it work for this one? Yeah, it would. So you can check your your method with another one. So it would be minus 4n plus 14. OK, now if I want to go funky, what can I do? Not funky. If I want to switch it, I can go 14 minus 4n just in case i wanted to just be like funky funky yeah now the reason why these are more difficult is the fact that we're dealing with negatives and positive numbers negatives and positives so just take your time do your best and see if you can arrive at the right answer okay me and Mohammed have said this earlier practice i don't necessarily say practice makes perfect but it definitely allows you to make progress okay so let me just check here yeah here we go here are your example questions okay so there's a link to the Desmos. I'm going to remember this time to actually get you onto the right pathway. Boom, there we go. So there are the nth term questions I would like you to work through. OK. Get stuck in. Show what you can do. And if you wish, you can use a calculator because this is coming up on paper three. So if you would like to use a calculator, be my guest. Excellent question, Ellie. So Ellie's just asked, what does it mean by the 50th term? So what I'd like you to do. OK, that's fine, guys. So what I'd like you to do. Oh, God, right. Let me use one of these, for example, from the start. OK, so let's say I wanted the 50th number in this sequence at the top. I take six, I times it by the number 50. And then I take away three. So six times 50 is 300. Take away three is 297. So essentially, work out your nth term sequence and substitute in, substitute in the number 50 into that sequence, into that uh, expression that you've given yourself, um, and then do the maths. If that makes any sort of sense, I kind of chucked you in at the deep end there. I do apologize for that. See what you can do. Put a number in there, and then if you've got it right, 
Excellent. If you've not got it right, don't worry, because I've not taught it you yet, and it might be something you did a while ago. So if the answer is 7n minus 6, what would the 50th term be? So Ellie, what I would do, I would do 7 times 50 and then take away the 6. So take the n out, put the number 50 in. So 7 times 50, subtract 6. Okay, guys, looking really good so far. <clears throat> looking really good. Now, the one thing that I'm kicking myself over is the fact that I've not got exam questions from the past, but I've got a strategy now. Thursday afternoon, I can do a little bit 
of a starter whereby it covers the topics today exam questions so you can be like have a look at some standard form exam questions have a look at some nth term exam questions etc that could be a starter and then we can move on to the other bits so that's my thought process which i think will be quite nice ties the sessions together nicely really really good first session this guy's very impressed Okay, can we give me one more minute to finish these questions or to get as far as you can, and then I will review them and go through them with you, okay? Okay. Yeah, I thought I was muted then. Yeah, Ellie, so this is going to be the last like topic we'll do today what i'm going to do and it was my fault i've really thrown off the structure of the lesson given the fact that we had a 15 minute delay at the start um we'll go through these answers and then we'll finish just before lunch and probably about quarter two and then thursday afternoon one till three we'll do another session based on exam questions from this topic and then looking at extra ones that essentially what i'm doing guys is i'm taking this like advanced material and I'm looking, I'm thinking, right, what's a good topic to do online that we've not done for a while and that students can do with a bit of extra practice on? So fractions came up, standard form came up on there. And then tomorrow I'm going to watch Peaky Blinders in bed and probably plan Thursday's afternoon session. So I'll be productive. I'll do two birds, one stone there and make it as good as possible. Yeah, of course, Lucy, I will record them um, so you can refer back to them. Hopefully you found this guy's like beneficial. I know it's slightly different in the fact that it's kind of like a lesson, but um, hopefully doing this structured setting is quite good. <clears throat> OK, guys, what we'll do, we'll look at these questions. We'll see if I can get them right and we'll see if we all get the same answers. OK, that'd be a nice way to finish if we're all singing on the same hymn sheet. OK, so. Write down the nth term sequence for the following 1, 8, 15, 22, 29. Right, they're going up in seven. I can see that quite clearly. So I'm going to say seven there. Yeah, excellent. Seven there. Yeah, excellent. So it's going to be seven and just fix that up. I want nice, neat notes if possible. So seven and once I've done that, do my seven times table across the top. That allows me to work out how to get from there down to here. Cheers, Ty, thank you. Uh, 28, so how do I get from seven down to one? I subtract six, yeah, take away six, excellent. So seven and take away six. Now this is the bit where I kind of threw you in. What you need to do, what would be the 50th term? So instead of continuing this sequence and then having to do 50 numbers, the quick and the easier method is to swap out the n and put the letter or put the number 50 in. So 7 times 50 take away 6. Well, 7 times 50 is 350. Take away 6 is indeed 344. So identifying the nth term sequence allows us then to predict or know exactly what's coming up in the 50th term. OK, so 344. Brilliant stuff. OK, 12, 16, 20, 24 and 28. Once again, what they're going up in, I can see they're going up in fours. So four and OK, how do I get from four up to 12? How do I get from eight up to 16? Indeed, I add eight. OK, hundredth term. Well, four times 100 is what I need to do and then add eight. Four times 100 is 400. Add eight is 408. So yeah, trust me guys, I'd much rather, that took me what, maybe 10 seconds to do? Imagine how long it would take me to do this for 100 different numbers, adding four each time. And the term sequences and maths in general allows us to be quite efficient when we calculate things. Ooh, three. Why do I say ooh? So I can see those numbers are going down. So this is slightly spicier. 
we're going down in three, so it's going to be minus three m. Okay. Ellie's doing one of them things, so so yes, you've got an idea, but you're not 100 percent sure. So minus three up to eight, minus six up to five, minus nine up to two, minus um, twelve. So once again, I like kind of look for a pair of numbers that I like the most, and it often ends up being like where there's two negatives because I, I know the gaps between negatives are kind of wholesome. OK, so between minus 12 and minus 11, there's a gap of 11. So it is indeed plus 11. Uh Oh, I've lost the plot. There we go. Plus 11. So get my pen. Add 11. So what would be the nth, the 20th term? So minus three times by 20. Well, that's going to be minus 60 add 11 so minus 60 add 11 that's going to get closer to zero so it's going to be minus 49 now that's a good little stretch and challenge there because negative numbers a bit awkward sometimes so if you've got a strategy for negative numbers excellent okay minus 5 minus 11 minus 17 minus 23 minus 29 that's going to be minus 6 going down in minus six. So minus six, N, how do I get from minus six to minus five? I add a little one, add one. What would be the 30th term in this sequence? Well, minus six times by 30 is minus 180. Add one is minus 179. Imagine it's, you know, minus 180 degrees freezing cold. You add one degree, it's gonna go up slightly to minus 179, okay? Now, is there one more question? No, well, that was it, I thought there was one more. So is that there isn't? Okay, so what we're gonna do, because I think it's good for us all to be on the same wavelength, we're gonna finish the session there about quarter to 12, okay? So we've been here for about an hour and a half, which I think is a fair effort. Next Thursday, or this Thursday, sorry, we'll look at Pythagoras' theorem, and we'll look at doing some exam questions based on some of the topics we've done today so you can see what you remembered in the space of like 48 hours or so and then we'll look at some other topics now i've not chosen the other topics yet i'm gonna have a look through them see which one takes my fancy we we'll see which one i think is beneficial for us as a group and then we'll go through them thursday next week as well okay but guys phenomenal effort and genuinely thank you for making the time and the effort to be here today so I know it's very easy to be like, no, nah, I'm not going to bother. You guys putting in that time and effort, I really hope it's been beneficial for you. And I hope that what we've covered today will help you in the future and that you've had confidence and you found the session not too bad. OK, well, guys, once again, thank you for making the effort to be in here. I will take your names. I'll pass it on to the team. So let's say Chris teaches you or Kath or, Lou, or whoever it may be, they'll be aware that you've made the time and the effort to be here today. And hopefully they drop me a little message to say well done. I know some of them are on holiday, so it might be difficult for them. OK, but guys, it is quarter two. Have a lovely rest of the day. Um, if I don't see you again, have a great Easter. And if I do see you again, I'll catch you soon. OK, all the best, guys. Take care. And any questions, drop me a message and I'll get back to you as best as I can. All right. I'll catch you guys in a bit. See you in a bit.